Hey, this is Jeff again with the Valhalla Venture, the guyservice.com, R E I G U I D E S E R V I C E.com. Want to do a real quick video and talk about teams and what all you need to be successful as a flipper or buy and hold, either one. Um, we've talked about how the most important and really only important thing about these deals is um, finding a deal. So once you have a deal, if you want to actually flip it, if you want to go through the whole process and uh, recapture all of that potential equity, here's what you got to do. You got to have a team. Now, yes, you can you can do the HGTV thing and do it yourself, um, and that's fine. You're more than welcome to go about that. Um, but still, even then, you'll be far more successful as a flipper or a whole. Uh, and hold investor if you have a team you can do it yourself but it's hard to scale when you're doing everything on your own right so having a team is real important you know having if you're gonna flip especially having a good realtor to list your property that you're not trying to negotiate with and just get the cheapest person but someone that will actually come out know your property watch it through the flip process really understand what all work you've put into this property and then take an effort to sell that property beyond just listening on the internet and waiting for people to come to them. One that will show up to showings and you know speak with your voice and represent you on that property. It's very important. Not super easy to find, but you can find it. And so finding a realtor to be on your team, really important. Another thing that's important to be on your team is a contractor. Now, this can even just be a handyman that doesn't have like a whole team of people and all that stuff and a bunch of equipment. It can literally just be a handyman. But you got to acknowledge that they're just a handyman and that they can't you know, do everything. But they also need to be able to acknowledge that. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is if you have a guy that can come in and be like, hey, look, you know, I'm not a carpenter, but I can do carpentry in, in a small amount and I can do this in a small amount. You can put him on those tasks or her on those tasks that are typically very difficult to find. It's, it's not the bigger projects, you know, a new roof, foundation, plenty of companies that do that, plenty of reputable companies that you can reach out to. When, but when it comes to like, you know, changing out electrical outlet cover plates and, you know, putting new switches in and doing all that kind of stuff, sure, you can hire an electrician. That's gonna cost you a tremendous amount of money versus having someone that is able to do very, very small, things like that change out plumbing fixtures change out light fixtures change out switches you know having someone on your team that can do all of that stuff is important but also limiting that person and knowing that having them do outlets and outlet covers and switches and plumbing fixtures that's one thing it's a completely different thing if you're like having them change out all the breakers on the main panel not the same thing you need a master electrician to do those types of things. Run new plumbing, you need to have a master plumber do those types of things. So you need to have a team member there that is competent in doing the things they know how to do, but also competent in you enough that you're gonna keep supplying them work that they can just do the things that they need to do and that they're good at doing and that they're able to do. Therefore, being able to keep doing the things they're good at because that's what tends to happen with trades is that, you know, the workload, they like working for someone. So they're like, okay, I like working for this person. What am I going to do? I'm going to do more work for them. And so as they try to do more and more work for them, they start getting into where that person is running out of work for them to do. And so they start getting into areas of doing things that they necessarily wouldn't want to do, shouldn't do, whatever. And that creates a lot of issues. Now, I spent enough time on that, but that's if you have a handyman that knows their own limitations and knows that you have plenty of work for them in other areas, then that's really what is important and more important than, you know, having a jack of all trades uh, and a master of none, because you just really want to have someone that is a jack of all trades and, and, a, and a master of a few, but the ability to say, okay. Uh, the other thing you need is a good title company that you can communicate with, talk to, establish a relationship with. Having a good title company is really having a good lawyer to handle all of your closing information and documents and all that kind of stuff. 
And so I think one of the things that's real important is if you, um, if you have a title company that you can have good, clear communication with, it's, it's important for a couple of reasons because people, you tend to think, oh, it's clear cut. You take them, you know, a title and you say, Hey, I want this, you know, put in my name and that's pretty much it. Right. Like, and they, they handle it. They make sure that there's no liens on it. Stamp a little stamp on it, telling you that it's free and clear and that it's you know, able to be purchased by you. That's all well and good. Um, However, if they stop communicating with you and letting you know what's going on, if they, you know, aren't being uh, helpful in the sense of taking care of, there's a weird new giant privacy fence. It's way bigger. You probably might have seen that in the background. But, um, but I think that one of the things that having a title company with good communication is, is that if there is any problems, they're going to let you know right away. If there's things that need to be handled, taken care of, it's not going to have to be one of those things where you're having to constantly follow up with them and say, hey, did this get taken care of? Hey, did this get taken care of? And it's not until you call that you find out that, no, those things haven't been taken care of because that's just horrible. Nobody wants that. Um, and so having a good relationship and having some, you know, a, a title company on your team, also very, very important. Um, and so... Having an established team of people that can help you in that sense is just the most the most basic. I mean, get, eventually you're going to want to have an attorney that you know is trustworthy and is going to not try to just you know make you rich off of your lawsuits, but it's just going to protect you and then also make sure that nobody takes advantage of you. And also we'll be able to give you counsel because you know they're called general counsel, but so few of them want to take the time to actually counsel. So make sure when you're are establishing a relationship with an attorney that that general counsel is willing to provide you some counseling because I think that uh, too many lawyers forget that part of the, the title right so let's see we got contractor realtor title company uh, handyman type of person a general contractor you know that you can work with that um, that you can say hey listen in order for me to make a profit on this property, I have to come in under this budget and I prefer to come in on this timeline and, and, and see what they can do. That is a better test of a general contractor um, than to just say, hey, give me the best price to make this place look, you know, basically how I want it to look. It's much better to give someone, in my opinion, uh, as a test to say, okay, you're a good general contractor. Here's this house that I've purchased for X amount of dollars. I have Y amount of dollars to put into it in order for me to be able to make a profit. And here's my timeline. How do you propose balancing paying people enough to keep them going and to keep them on that timeline with also trying to save as much as you can on labor and materials, but also giving me the best materials and the best labor possible? How do all those things play into this budget and this timeline? And figuring that out and having a good conversation with your general contractor, I think is something that's incredibly underrated. Um, and so having a good relationship with uh, and, and having a good teammate in your GC is ideal. I, I was a GC, I'm wearing my old company shirt right now. Um, and I hire a GC a lot for almost all of my projects. If there's more than a couple of trades, you know, that need to be coordinated, things need to go together, materials need to be purchased, that kind of stuff. I would much rather just go to my GC and say, hey, look, man, here's my budget, here's my timeline, do what you can do. So having these people established, you know, is important. Having people, you know, uh, some additional items for your team. If you can have people that are willing to go out there and look for properties for you. Um, having hard money lenders are a good part of your team. Even better is if they're private money lenders where people are willing to privately loan you money and invest in projects. Usually they'll hold a first position in, uh, on, a, on a deed in order to loan you money on deals. So there's a lot of different people that you can add, but there's the core group of people that you need to be able to rely on and building that and establishing that isn't something you can just go out and do. It's something that takes a little time, takes a little bit of effort, but the end reward is that you get to be blessed with others. Regardless of it's like, I'm already at G-U-I-D-S-E-R-B-I-C.com. Peace.